So let's say this is the string that we are going to encode using Huffman code. So here let's create function encode and let's pass the string. And now here inside this function, let's take a for loop to go through each character in the string. So for each character, what we're going to do, we're going to check if the character is already present in mapping dictionary or not. So here mapping is a dictionary. Let's create this dictionary here. So if the character is not present as a key in this mapping dictionary, then add the character with value one because at first encounter of the character, the frequency will be one. Else, if it is already present, then increase its frequency by one. So take the previous value and add one to that and put for that key. So now after getting the frequencies of all the characters, we're going to generate the tree. So let's create this function generate tree and let's pass this mapping dictionary in this function. Let's create this function. So here in this mapping function, let's get all the keys from this mapping dictionary and let's call it key set. So get mapping dot keys. So here we will get all the characters that are present in this mapping dictionary as keys. Now let's run a for loop for each character in this key set. We are going to create a node corresponding to that character. So here let's create a class Huffman node. And inside this class, let's take in it. So this will be having frequency of the node, data of the node, and left node attached to it and the right node attached to it. So let's set up all these fields. Self dot frequency is frequency, self dot data is data, and self dot left is left and self dot right is right. So now we can use this Huffman node class to create nodes for each character. So let's say node is Huffman node and here let's pass the frequency that we can get from this mapping dictionary which is the value present for that C and the data will be C itself and initially let's set up left and right as none. And now we are going to take an array in which we are going to store all these nodes. And we are going to call this array priority queue. We're calling it priority queue because we are going to add these nodes in that array in a certain priority. So we are going to append the node in this priority queue and after each insertion, we're gonna sort this priority queue. And we will sort this priority queue based on frequency. So it will sort all the nodes in ascending order of their frequencies. So we will be having the nodes that are having smallest frequency at the front. So the new priority queue will be the array returned by the sorted core. Now we are going to merge these nodes to generate a tree. So until the length of the priority queue is greater than one, which means if the priority queue is at least having two elements, then we can do the merging because we need at least two elements to merge them, right? So we will take the smallest of them, smallest two elements, we will take first from this priority queue, we will pop it from the start, and then we will pop the second again from the front. And now we can create the merge node out of these two nodes. So the frequency of this new merge node will be addition of the frequency of first node and the second node. And the data will, we will set hyphen as the data as this node is not having any character assigned to it. 
Now as left we will add first and as second we will add the second node. So we have deleted first and second from this priority queue and added them as left and right to this merge node. And now we append this merge node in this priority queue. And this whole thing we are doing inside while, right? So eventually it will form the complete tree. And after each insertion, we are sorting this priority queue according to the frequency. And finally, we only be having one node in this priority queue at the end of this file. So we will pop this node and this will be the root node of the tree that we have just created. And it will be having all the nodes attached to it. So here at this call, as a return value, we will get the root of the tree that we just generated. And now, after getting this tree, we are going to generate the binary code for each character. So let's create this function set binary code and let's pass this root and empty string. Now let's create this function set binary code. And here, if we are going towards the left, then we are going to append the string with zero, right? But, and if we are going towards right, then we are going to append the string with one. And this is how we're gonna form a string or binary code for each character. And everything we are going to do if the node itself is not none, right? So let's first go to left. If we are going towards left, Let's append the string or this string with zero. So here we are going towards left. We are appending it with zero and then we are recursively calling set binary code to go further in left. And now for right, we're going to do the same thing. We will set one if we are going towards right and then we are going towards right by recursively calling this function and now here we will check if we reach to a case when both left and right of the node is none so if left is none and right is none that means we have reached the leaf and leaf you know is the node having character right so here we have reached to a certain character and now we can set the binary code for that character. So here we're gonna take this care binary mapping dictionary in which we're gonna store the mapping of binary code for each character. Now let's come back to the set binary code function and here in this mapping, in this binary code mapping dictionary, Let's set the data of the node as the key, which is the character. And as the value, set the string generated for that character. And now at the end, or after coming back from the set binary code, we are going to exclude the last character from the string because we will be having one extra character at the end. So in both the cases, we are going to exclude the last character. So this is how we will get the generated binary for all the characters. Now let's print this char binary mapping between the character and the Huffman code that we just generated. Huffman code and here let's run a for loop to print the mapping and here let's print the character and the Huffman code for that character present in char binary mapping dictionary. And now let's format it and now here, after printing this mapping, let's generate the Huffman code string for the string given to us. So let's take empty string and now let's run for loop for each character in 
the string given to us. Concat it with the value present for it in this care binary mapping dictionary. And finally, return this final string, which is the Huffman coded string for the complete string given to us. And now let's call encode and print the result that we get for the given string. Let's save this and let's run this. Uh, we got unbound local error. Uh, or here we forgot to change this to a string str. So that's it. Now let's run this and see these are the codes for each character and this is the final coded string. So there was a slight difference between the codes for a few characters. For example, look at the F. In code, we got 1010 and here we are getting 1000 for F. This difference is because here these nodes 3 and 3 are exactly having the same frequency. So here we took this 3 node first which is having 1 and 2 attached to it. But in code, this D is coming first. So this D is coming at left and that's the only difference. Everything else is same.